What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports, back again with another one. WBO, welterweight champion. And who I have number one on my pound for pound list, Terrence Bud Crawford, who had been prominently linked to a mega showdown with eight division world champion, Filipino icon, and soon to be Hall of Famer, when he hangs up his gloves, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Now that fight fell by the wayside two times in the last year. First being due, due to the pandemic, according to uh, Crawford's promoter, Bob Arum, a.k.a. the Bob Father. The second time they tried to make it happen, the Saudi investors failed to show proof of funds. So the fight did not materialize. Now, Manny Pacquiao is signed to fight Errol the True Spence Jr., a.k.a. Free Smoke. They got that deal done. They're going to fight August the 21st. So that fight's going to be one of the many pay-per-view fights they're going to have going on in the next couple of months, man. They probably got like five pay-per-views going on in the next two to three months, man. It's crazy. But uh, they got some, I'll pay my money as long as I'm getting some good fights. I don't want to pay for no, like when they put, um, I don't want to just shit on this fight, but I'm just going to call it like I see it. When they put a, uh, Andy Ruiz versus Chris Ariola on pay-per-view. That ain't no pay-per-view fight, but you don't understand what they was doing. They, I think they uh, drew around uh, 125000 to 150000 pay-per-view buys. And based on what they paid Andy Ruiz, which I heard was a million, and they paid Chris Ariola 750000 And then, you know, they had to pay the guy, fighters on the undercard, you know, their money. I think the fight actually did make money with the uh, pay-per-view buys that they did for that fight. But... You know, they would, uh, you know, and then with the pay-per-view price, I think the fight was $49.99. So with that being said, the fight actually made money. It didn't make a lot of money, but yeah, it did, did make a profit. So kudos to uh, Al Heyman for uh, putting on a successful money-making pay-per-view fight, a fight that I didn't think should have been on pay-per-view, but bottom line is they wasn't in the red on that fight. But that's neither here nor there. Terrence Bud Crawford is in limbo. What would be his next move? Now, he was in a training camp in Colorado Springs training for the Manny Pacquiao fight. You know, he thought he was going to get that fight. When word got back to him that the fight was not going to happen, he continued to uh, hold his training camp in Colorado Springs. But during the Memorial Day weekend, they broke camp. Him and his team, they broke camp. I don't know if they're coming back to camp, but right now he don't have a dance partner. And right now his contract is going to be up in October his uh, promoter, Bob Arum, has stated that he does have one fight left with top rank boxing. So I know, so I don't know if the contract expires in October, they will still have to be uh, on top rank. Say, say, they, say they can't come up with a fight before October, which I doubt, but just say that's the case. The way Bob Arum said, he said, look, he owed me one fight. So regardless of when the contract expires, he owes top rank one fight. So I think they'll try to get that fight in before October. And he'll try to fight maybe a Costillo, Clayton, or somebody like that. Now, that could be one scenario. The other scenario is he could get bought out. There's just one fight left. You know, top rank promoter Bob Aaron has said he's lost a lot of money putting on Terrence Crawford's fights, especially on pay-per-view. The fight with Postal, the fight with um, Amir Khan, both of those fights lost money. So he says the money he's lost uh, promoting Terrence Crawford, he could have built a big mansion in Beverly Hills. So he might be willing to listen to uh, maybe a promoter like a Eddie Hearn come in and buy out the last fight of that contract, and he signed with Matchroom Boxing. I can see that happening. And that's some of the things I've been hearing through the grapevine, that he, that he could sign with Eddie Hearn along with MTK Global. It would be like a partnership. Now, a lot of people say, man, what? What is Chance Crawford going to do signing with Eddie Hearn? Eddie Hearn don't have any elite welterweights in his stable. But you got to understand Terrence Bud Crawford's mindset. Why did he re-sign with Top Rank knowing that Top Rank didn't have any elite welterweights under its stable? The one answer to that is security. Terrence Crawford is the kind of guy he likes security. He likes to be uh, signed a contract, a multi-fight contract, where he knows he's going to get this amount of money per fight. A minimum of this amount of money per fight. So you got to understand that contract he signed with Top Rank he was going to make it at least three, a little over three million per fight. No matter if he was fighting Jose Benavidez Jr., Jeff Horn, or Igor Kavalaska, he was going to make at least 
three million. He made five and a half million fighting Amir Khan because that was a pay per view fight. But they, they top rate could not pay him no less than three, a little over three million per fight. And I think that's what um, Eddie Hearn is going to do. He's going to offer him the bag. He's going to offer him a multi fight contract. It's going to be similar to uh, the contract he got with top rank. It might be even a little bit more. He, Eddie might jump it up to three and a half to four million per fight. Say, look, you're going to get this amount of money per fight no matter who you fight. If you get a big fight, obviously you will be making more than that, but you will get three and a half to four million dollar minimum per fight. I think Eddie Hearn is going to go that route. He needs to make ways in the welterweight division. He has Conor Ben, he's got Dev David Avenesian, and he got Mikey Garcia for one fight. You know, he signed, he fought, he, uh, he signed Mikey Garcia uh, about a year and a half ago with, to a contract with Matchroom Boxing. It was basically a one-in-one -one fight. The third fight would be with Matchroom Boxing. The second fight, Matchroom would have a chance to match if uh, Mikey Garcia would, you know, seek the, the fight outside of Matchroom Boxing. So I think that's going to be a similar contract that he gave from uh, top rank, gave uh, Terrence Bud Crawford. I think that would be a contract that Eddie Hearn would be looking to uh, do to get and sign Terrence Bud Crawford. Now, like I said, Eddie Hearn is trying to make waves here in America. If he could uh, get Terrence the Bud Crawford to uh, sign with Matchroom Boxing USA, then he would, uh, he, he, you know, then he would be having a foothold in the welterweight division. Then he will have a fight in the future for a corner Ben, because who could be in the same boat as Terrence Bud Crawford over there with Matchroom Boxing, not being able to get fights with any of the elite guys over there with the PBC in the welterweight division. Another guy you, you could put him in right off the bat is David Avenesia. That could be his first fight with Matchroom Boxing. Good fight over there with David Avenesia. I don't know if they could, they would probably have that fight here in the United States. They could put that fight, you know, in Omaha, Nebraska. You know, uh, Terrence Bud Crawford's hometown. They can put that there. Maybe they can put it up in Lincoln, Nebraska. He's fought there before. That's not too far from his hometown. Basically, in his home state, he could fight uh, David Avenesia in his first fight. If somehow they can give the bag to Mikey Garcia, they can uh, maybe set that fight up as uh, Terrence Bud Crawford's second fight against Mikey Garcia. They could, that would be a huge the zone pay per view fight. Yeah, they could sell that fight. But uh, Mikey Garcia has not seemed to be interested in fighting. Terrence Crawford, he says he, a fight with him and Terrence Crawford would be boring. He would have to chase Terrence Bud Crawford around the ring, and the fans wouldn't would be willing to uh, excited about watching that type of fight between himself and uh, Mikey Garcia, uh, according to uh, Mikey. Well, the fight between Mikey Garcia and Terrence Bud Crawford. That's what Mikey Garcia said. You know, so he hasn't seen too uh, interested in fighting Terrence Crawford, but if Eddie Hearn throws him enough money, maybe he would be willing to uh, fight Terrence Bud Crawford. And you got to understand that Terrence Bud Crawford does have a belt, the WBO belt. So that would be Mikey Garcia a chance to win another world title in a different weight class. So that might be might, that might interest him along with, you know, they probably have to throw Mikey Garcia at least ten million for that fight. He made seven million fighting Jesse Vargas, so Eddie Hearn got to throw at least ten million for Mikey to even consider that. So that could be a possibility uh, for Terrence Bud Crawford. And then in his third fight, then you set up the mega showdown with. Uh, him and uh, Conor Ben, that could be a big fight over there in the UK. They can maybe put that fight over there in Wembley Stadium, or, you know, have a big, big crowd over there, do good numbers over there. Or maybe they can bring it down here in Vegas and have that fight there in um, the Las Vegas Raiders uh, football stadium if the fight is big enough. Or you put it over there in Mandalay Bay, one of those casinos, MGM, and you have a big fight over here in the USA. So that's what I think they'll probably offer uh, Terrence Bruff Crawford, a three-fight deal with Matchroom, the zone boxing, with the first fight being David Avenesian, the second fight being Mikey Garcia, or it could be in the third fight being Conor Ben. Now, them roles could be reversed because Mikey Garcia got one fight left, so it, it possibly could be Mikey Garcia the first fight, and then David Avenesian the second fight, and then Conor Ben the third fight. That's the best case scenario for uh, matchroom boxing to offer Terrence Bud Crawford along with the bag and the security of a multi-fight deal. Maybe that'll be something that uh, will entice Terrence the Bud Crawford to sign with Eddie Hearn. Now, Eddie Hearn did an interview a couple of days ago, you know, talking about the new uh, the zone deal that he's got with the UK and all over the country that he's left for uh, Sky Sports. And he said he had one big addition coming to the zone. He didn't mention no name. He didn't mention what it was. But he said he got one big addition coming. And that's all he said. And that kind of led me to believe that he was talking about Terrence Bud Crawford. Now, I could be wrong, but from what I'm hearing in, uh, through the grapevine, I'm hearing that it's a strong possibility 
that Terrence Bud Crawford could sign with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Boxing USA, along with a partnership with MTK Global. We will see what happens, and we will see what transpires. Now, what Terrence Bud Crawford got to worry about is, will he become the next Demetrius Andrade, Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade over there in the zone? A guy with a lot of talent, a guy with a high skill level, but can't get no big fights over there, even though you got guys that's quote-unquote on the same side of the street, like Canelo Alvarez is with the zone, you know, He's on a well. He was with the zone. He was a, he was a, he was on a contract with Golden Boy. Now he's on a, basically a fight by fight basis. But his last fight was on the zone. During that time that he had a contract with Golden Boy, a promotion in the zone, didn't get the fight done with him and Andrade. You had Triple G over there. You had uh, who else you got? Triple G over there. You had a lot of guys over there that uh, Andrade couldn't get a fight with. Billy Joe Saunders. None of those fights came to fruition for Demetrius Andrade. Instead, he's fighting guys like, you know, Salucky and Michael Keeler, Keebler, Keeler, whatever his name is. You know, he's fighting guys like uh, Liam, what that guy's name was? Liam Williams, fighting Liam Williams. You know, he's just not getting any kind of big names over there. Couldn't get the Triple G fight, couldn't get the Canelo Alvarez fight, couldn't get the Billy Joe Saunders fight, couldn't get the Daniel Jacobs fight. You know, all those guys was over there with the zone at the time. Couldn't get none of those fights. Couldn't even get a Callum Smith fight who held a belt over there. Couldn't even get him over there. So it was just a a situation where Demetrius Andrade was basically a career is passing him by as far as him ever becoming one of the top names of boxing. Never having that signature fight so he can showcase his skills and pronounce to the world that he's one of the elite fighters, one of the pound-for-pound pound fighters in the boxing game because he definitely had the skills to be – on that pound for pound list, but does not have that fight, does not have that signature fight to be considered to put on that pound for pound list. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. But uh Terrence Bud Crawford is gonna have to make a decision when his contract runs out in October. We will see what happens and we will see what transpires. But it's gonna be very, very interesting to see what happens, man. Very, very, very interesting to see what happens though. But look for Eddie Hearn to sign, try to sign Terrence Bud Crawford. If you hear this, them two get uh, linked up together in, after in October, whenever his contract runs out in October, I don't know the specific date, but I just know it runs out in October, but whatever the case may be, when he gets his last fight in with top-ranked boxing, once that occurs, because everything I'm hearing that he's out the door, he's not re-signing with top-ranked. He's, 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 he's done with top-ranked. They couldn't deliver the Pacquiao fight for him. He's moving on. They haven't delivered any of the top welterweights in boxing to him, and the Earl Spence Jr. fight has not materialized. The Sean Showtime Porter fight, for whatever reason, did not materialize. And uh, Terrence Bud Crawford don't like the comments that Bob Aaron continue make, continuously make. He made a comment about a week ago. What did he say about uh, Terrence Bud Crawford? He said something about, you know, the guy is a phenomenal fighter, but he just can't sell. You know, it's nothing personal against him, but it is what it is. I'm just paraphrasing. That's basically what uh, Bob Aaron said. He said, guy dude got a lot of talent, man, but he just, you know, he don't, he ain't got no personality, basically, what he said. He don't, he's not a self-promoter. And he don't sell, man, you know, and that's why I couldn't put together the fight between him and Sean Showtime Porter. Those guys are the top guys in the welterweight the division, but there's no way I could put that fight on pay-per-view. So basically saying, I put that fight on pay-per-view, I'm going to lose money, just like I lost money on Crawford versus Postal, and just like I lost money on Crawford versus Khan. He said, I'm not going to go down that road again. The old saying in baseball, what is it, one, two, three strikes you out? He said, nah, you ain't going to get me on that third strike. I'm out of there after two strikes. And he's moving on, it seems to be. And uh, that's what that's what Terrence Bud Crawford is, uh, have heard. And that's why he's ready to uh, move on to Greenest Pastures. Uh, so he hopes. So we will see what happens. And we will see what transpires. But let me know your thoughts about Terrence Bud Crawford signing with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Boxing USA in partnership with the MTK Global, which I'm hearing his name prominently linked to those two guys through the grapevine. Let me know your thoughts. And hit the like button if you like the content of this video. And subscribe to JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend. And I holler.